I figured out how to dig a well 40 feet deep in my backyard. So in this video, I'll try to show you how I did that. For some reason, all my projects seem to begin with digging a hole. So step one, dig a hole. I'm putting my well next to my shed, which is conveniently located in my yard and it's a short distance to electricity, so it'll make wiring easier. As with my other projects, I'm using an auger to dig down around eight feet until I hit water. And uh, just like my dry well project, once I hit eight to 10 feet, I put in a four inch PVC pipe. This is the outer casing for my well. As you'll see later in the video, I'm gonna need water to escape around the bottom of this pipe. And so I'm cutting some slits in the side to act as teeth. The four inch pipe went down about eight feet and I ended up jetting it down another foot so that the entire 10 foot pipe is in the ground. I'll talk more about jetting later. I'm using three different PVC pipe sizes for this project. First is this four inch PVC outer casing. This is going directly into the hole that I dug. Inside of that will be a two inch PVC pipe. That'll be the drill bit that I'll actually jet water down through to dig the hole. And finally, inside of that will be the one and a quarter inch PVC pipe that will connect the pump to the well point itself to draw water out of the well. Now that I have the four inch pipe into the ground, I need to feed the two inch pipe in through it. And just like the four inch pipe, I'm gonna carve out some teeth on the bottom of the two inch pipe. Uh, for this, I found it actually easier to use one of those cone drill bits. It seemed to work pretty well. This is the two inch pipe that we're using for our, call it an inner casing, but we're also gonna use this to do the drilling. So to recap, this outer casing is 10 feet long. It's uh, about a foot above the ground, so it's nine feet down. And uh, we're gonna use this pipe with the bit uh, I just made on the coupler on the bottom to uh, jet and twist and drill as far as I can. This does not need to be watertight. And so, and actually at the end, I could remove this from the well if I wanted to. It is the inch and a quarter inner pipe that needs to be watertight and all that. So we're using this for drilling. I'll, similar to the four inch pipe, I'll drill some holes in the side to give myself some twisting leverage. I just set this pipe here and it's already sinking, so um, I'm going to get the jet in there and start drilling. Okay, there we go. Alright, I want to get this pipe to where the 4 inch pipe is. Shouldn't take long, since we already drilled the other one. So yes, by jetting, I mean I bought a 50-foot hose and I put it on the end of a pressure washer and I'm going to feed it down this tube to try to blast a path down into the dirt. I put a vice grip on the hose where I think it should stop and I put zip ties every 10 feet along the hose so that I always know how deep I am. It definitely isn't this easy the whole time, but I'm off to a pretty good start here. There's water coming out of the top of the pipe now, and you can see that it's a little brown because that water coming out of the end of the pressure washer is pushing up cuttings or, or dirt and mud and stuff out of the hole to make space for the pipe. Okay, the first pipe is in the hole as far as it'll go. It's time to add a second pipe to keep extending this 
inner casing, let's call it. And I use a normal 2 inch coupling with PVC cement to attach the pipes. I glue the outside of the first pipe and the inside of the coupler that is attached to the second pipe and uh, just sort of twist it on and now my 10 foot pipe has turned into a 20 foot pipe and I can keep drilling. Just like before and I repeat this step for each pipe that I'm able to attach, I feed the pressure washer hose down the pipe. You'll want a ladder for this because it is sticking 10 feet out of the ground and uh, it'll be hard to reach otherwise. So I started out by immediately trying to twist and push the pipe the second I got the power washer going. What I found though is actually if I just let it sit and run for 10 or 15 minutes, it would start pushing the all the cuttings out on its own, doing most of the work for me, and I could come back and pretty easily push it down into the ground once the pressure washer had dug its way through a sufficient amount to allow the pipe down. All right, this is uh, the current state of things. Pumping out a bunch of, whoops. There used to be sand in this. Now there's, I don't feel any graininess, so I think this is just blue clay here. And uh, we're pumping out quite a bit of it. And I like this sort of set it and forget it uh, type of <laughs> approach. I'm gonna let this run for a bit before I try to drive this down any further. Let it pump out some of this blue gunk. One thing I did notice is if you leave this hose in here for a while and the pressure washer head is below the bottom of the pipe, it can get stuck in there. Uh, it sort of digs itself a little hole at an angle uh, going away from the bottom of the pipe and it gets really hard to get out. So I did have to pull on this thing really hard a couple of times. I would just be cautious of this and make sure that you're constantly measuring the length of the hose so that it doesn't get too far below the bottom end of the pipe. The pressure washer I'm using is pretty small. It's only 1.2 gallons a minute and uh, it was only a hundred bucks from Home Depot but it ended up working great for this project. The top of uh, this coupling here marks 20 feet. There's two 10-foot pipes attached to it below. I'm going to take a break to uh, let some of this water drain. Well, 1.2 gallons a minute is still enough to fill up this area around the pipe with water at a rate faster than the ground can absorb it. So I, so I got this quarter horsepower pump to uh, help pump the water from around the base of the pipe. Okay, this is the end of my 37-foot pipe. I'm going to add another five foot section. I'm going to start adding, instead of adding 10 foot sections, I'm going to start adding five foot sections just because it makes it easier to work with. If you look at this hose I'm using, I'm almost at the end of it. This is a 50 foot hose and that last zip tie there represents 40 feet. And I let the pressure washer run for quite a while here but I'm not able to get any further down. It really feels like if I lift the pipe up and down, it really feels like I've hit something pretty hard and I'm just not making any more progress. So I'm really happy with how far I got. 37 to 40 feet is really good. That's gonna give me plenty of water to work with, especially considering the water table starts at you know, call it 10 to 15 feet. So that's 20 feet of water on top of the well point to draw from. So I'm done drilling my two inch pipe as far as it'll go. At this point, I decide to go ahead and get my pump set up. You can insert the engine quarter pipe first if you want to, doesn't really matter. I just decided to go ahead and set up the pump. This is the pump I got from Home Depot. Oof. 
All right, let me pause here for a second. One lesson I had to learn the hard way, if you look at that piece of hose right there, it's dented. This actually ended up mattering quite a lot because one night, a few weeks after I installed this, this piece ended up blowing off the pump because it's, it, it remains under pressure and a bunch of water leaked out. So I ended up using a different pump in the end. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you visually inspect your pump closely before you install it. But anyway, all these pumps are set up basically the same way. This is where water is pumped out. And this is where water is pulled in from the well point. Now for this video, I decided to basically skip all of the setting up of the pump and the plumbing and all that. If you want to see that, I can put that in a separate video. But I still have to put my well point into the ground, so I'm going to skip to that part. This is the PVC well point. I got a five foot long well point. You can see these slits that were cut into it. This one is from Lowe's. Uh, it's manufactured by Zoller. Okay, yes, everything causes cancer in California. Um, I got this one because it was available. These things are actually a little harder to find than I expected. I pieced together 40 feet of inch and a quarter PVC pipe with the well point on the bottom, obviously. I'm using interior PVC couplers so that there's nothing sticking out of the sides of this. So it's a nice, long, very smooth pipe. I found this part actually the most physically difficult thing to do because 40 feet of PVC is very heavy and I've got to bend it enough to get it into this vertical hole. But once you get it in there, it's just a matter of feeding it down. No matter what, we cannot lose that pipe down the hole. If we do, this is all over. Right. It's sinking further just by me kind of... So at this point, I am reasonably confident that the well point is far enough below the bottom of the two inch drill pipe that it'll have access to enough sort of water unimpeded. What I don't want to do is end up in a situation like this where the two inch pipe is sort of covering part of the well point like, like a sleeve. I really want it to look like this and based on my measurements of the two inch pipe and the inch and a quarter pipe, uh, I'm pretty confident that there's enough space below for it to work out. I'm installing a well cap to keep junk from falling into this hole. I'm hooking up the inch and a quarter pipe to the pump now. Also very important to install a check valve on the inch and a quarter pipe that's going into the pump. Okay, everything's hooked up. It's time for the moment of truth. Okay, uh, the pressure is going up. So it stopped at 40 something. It's a 3050 pressure switch. Uh, I guess that's fine. So it works. I'm making this video six months later. 
and the entire system still works great. I've had absolutely no issues other than what I mentioned earlier. I did have to replace the pump, but the well itself is fine. I ended up measuring five to six gallons per minute of flow rate, and that's more than enough for what I'm using this for, which is irrigation mainly and you know filling up containers and things like that. So overall, this project was really successful. If you're watching this, this is the way to do it. I'm doing projects like this all the time. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to see me dig more holes in my backyard.